Hey, what's up everyone? It's Phil Meyer. I have a problem that I have to tell you about. Whenever I play a game, I often get stuck in analysis paralysis where I don't want to make a bad choice or lock myself out of a progression path. If you find yourself with the same problem and you're going to play Stellar Blade, then this video is for you. Here are some tips I've learned after completing the game. This first one is really simple. Points of interaction in the game are marked with white dots. These could be NPCs you can speak to, items you can pick up, or objects you can move. That dot can become green if there's something new for you there, such as a quest objective or NPCs that have something new to tell you. Sometimes the chairs and camps are marked this way. That means that if you rest there, you'll hear a new story bit. You could miss those if Eve was in good condition and you weren't planning on resting, so keep your eyes out for them. When you get down to spending skill points, where you put them initially isn't something you need to worry too much about. I suggest picking what sounds most interesting to you and keep a balance as you're going to end up using all the action skills. If you want to reset your skill tree, you can use the SP initializers to do so and you'll be able to purchase more of them. However, you won't really need to do this as by the time you get towards the end of the game, you'll likely have earned enough SP to unlock all the skills. And if for whatever reason you haven't, you can always grind for SP by fighting more enemies. You can also equip the SP enhancing gear if you'd like to accelerate progress. Many of the nano suits require money and crafting items to both purchase and unlock. Early in the game you might have limited resources, so I'd recommend focusing on whichever nano suits you like most. But again, towards the end of the game, this isn't something you're going to have to worry about. Money and crafting items are not limited, and you'll be able to earn more if you need them. Speaking of earning those resources, one of the ways I recommend doing so is by completing the fishing side quests. Finishing these will allow you to quickly farm fishing points, which can be traded for these resources. I've made a prior video about that, and I'll link it in the description. You can check it out when you're ready. If you're a trophy hunter, there are several you can earn by defeating enemies with different attack types. This is by using ranged attacks, beta skills, burst skills, as well as a kind of spoilery attack mode that will be unlocked partway through the game. You can grind for any of these trophies you're missing by just fighting enough enemies at the end game, but that'll take some time. So as you play through the game normally, don't forget to balance out the different attacks you use and you'll unlock these more naturally. Now towards the latter part of the game, there's a main point of no return. It'll be very clear when this happens. You'll speak to Adam to progress the story, and he'll ask you if you're sure you want to continue. You should take the time to complete your side quests before moving forward. Make sure you've explored Zion and picked up any collectibles it has to offer. You'll be able to come back to Zion after this point of no return, but your access to it will be much more limited. You will be able to visit the other regions in the game, so you can pick up the collectibles there afterwards if you'd like. Here's an addition to that point of no return choice. As you make discoveries such as data log items and beverage cans, you may notice a white icon in the upper right of the screen that looks like Lily. This is tracking your affinity level with Lily. You don't need to find everything to reach 100%, and at least in the game's current build, there's no way to view your progress outside of when you've made a discovery. Now why is this important? If you want to explore the game's optional area and see the game's secret ending, you'll need 100% affinity before moving forward. If your affinity level is complete, you will first go to the game's optional area automatically before moving on with the main mission. If you've been diligent about completing side quests and scanning for those collectibles, you're probably in good shape here. When you do decide to take on the final mission of the game, and you'll know when this is, it's not the point of no return we just talked about. You should consider yourself locked down that path. Once you complete the game, you won't be able to go back and explore the other regions for collectibles with that save. Loading a completed save will start you at the final battle, so there won't be much more you can do with it. You may also know that the game has three endings, and you'll earn a trophy for viewing each ending. In order to get the game's platinum trophy, you'll need to have seen all three endings. To see all of these endings, you could of course play through the game three separate times. Alternatively, if you have PS Plus, you could back up your save to the cloud and restore it later on. There will be a camp just before the game's final battle. This is the point that you could back up your save. When you reach the final boss, you'll need to make a choice that will lock you into one of the three endings. If you back up your save at the camp before making this choice, you could restore it later on and then view one of the other three endings. This would let you see two of the three endings in one playthrough. Once Lily's affinity is at 100%, or you progress past the point of no return, whichever comes first, one of the game's endings will be locked out. If you're normally thorough when playing games, you might actually have to have made an effort to not be thorough in this case if you want to see the ending in the game that requires incomplete affinity level with Lily. I'm personally not fond of trophies like this where it feels like you need to invest in being worse at the game to unlock them, but that's just my take. Unlocking all of these ending trophies isn't something I considered worthwhile for me, 
but I know that there are people out there who want to know how it works, so hopefully this is helpful. So these were the key things I'd mention to a completionist who's just getting started with Stellar Blade. I hope they helped you out. I really enjoyed this game, and I'm glad I decided to play it. Thanks for watching the video, and take care.